Hey, what's up, YouTube? Silver Dragons here, and I'm really excited because today I'm joined uh, by Sean Reynolds, the customer service manager over at Bullion Max. Uh, Sean, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Can't complain. Awesome. Now, okay, customer service manager. So you mm -hmm. deal with all of the complaints and all of the criticism, but also all of the compliments, right? Yes, uh, it's, it's pretty balanced, and I think a lot is... Uh, because many of the people who are new to Bullion Max are also new to purchasing metals. And so my role is also helping to educate those folks, depending on what their goals are, to steer them in the direction of some products that should help them meet those goals. Um, interestingly enough, the, the complaints we get, you know, we got them in other places that, that I worked in the industry as well, but we're you know, trying to work our way through those things. Some things are never going to change. It's always going to cost more to use a credit card. It's always going to cost more to use PayPal. You know, this is a very low margin industry. Sorry. Um, but, uh, you know, we are we are trying to provide uh, an organization that gets you high quality products at a really good price, ship them out quickly, ship them out safely, and if you have an issue, well, that's where the service component comes in, which is me. Now, let me ask you about this. So one thing that happens with silver coins is they can get toned, uh, which usually we don't really think of as a bad thing unless it's, you know, uh, maybe some people don't like their silver eagles turning a little bit orange or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so do you ever get complaints or, or people worried about the toning on their silver that you sell them? Great question. Um, not yet. And the reason I say that is because most of our inventory is new inventory. So since we're new and most of what's available right now is what the mints are putting out, there aren't a whole lot of people reselling right now because they're, you know, they're hedging against the same problems, so to speak. So there isn't as much trading going on as there was, say, for example, 10 years ago or so. Uh so uh, knock on wood or whatever you happen to have in front of you for good luck. Um, we're not hearing those those types of complaints. But what I learned years ago was the proverbial keep it in a cool, dry place. Right. And so if keeping it in a dry place might be your issue. I, I knew of a guy in Florida who put his stuff in a safe, but it was not in an air conditioned room. So he had humidity, he had heat, he had heat and humidity, and boy, I tell you what, he was not happy with the silver even after one. Year. <laughs> it all he turned black. A humidor, yeah, <laughs> is what he did. You know, great for cigars, not so great for silver. But uh, you know, whether it's damp rid or some of the other commercial products that are out there to help you with a with a cool, dry place. You know, if you buy shoes often. Grab those little packets of, of silica gel and just set them aside. You rotate them in and out of your uh, your your environment where you're storing your stuff, and it'll do it'll do wonders for you as a preventative measure. Obviously, it's not going to help you much if the toning has already happened, but you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think some of those you can even like put them in the oven and then reuse them. Yep. So I, I obviously follow the uh, manufacturer's guidelines on that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the little, uh, you know, asterisks there. Um, <laughs> but I think, yes, because what you're doing is you're baking the moisture back out of it again. So then it's back into that m mode of being able to collect moisture for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, okay, one other thing that I hear a lot and I've seen a lot, especially mm -hmm. in the older maple leaves and some of the other mints um, like Austria or South Africa is the milk spotting, right? So this yeah. is obviously just on silver coins, not on gold or anything like that. But are people complaining about the milk spot and what do you guys tell them? Well, again, with the newer inventory, we're not, we're not seeing that much. Um, but I've always discussed with them that if you ever wanted proof that your silver is genuine, there it is. Now, it's not pretty. It's kind of like a backhanded compliment to say that's pure silver. Look at it. And I go, yeah, look at it. Look at the spots. I don't like it. You know, I totally understand. Um, the thing is, 
how often are you really going to, you know, look at it, look at it? I mean, do you have any recommendations for, for people who are stacking to get it? I mean, are you a don't ever clean it, don't ever touch it type of person? Or are you like a, a well, you know, with with a, a cotton cottony cloth, you can wipe it? Where Where are you on that? Uh, well, for me personally, so if it's a numismatic item, never touch it, right? There we go. You don't touch it with your finger. You can touch the edge of the coin or whatever, but you're never touching it, right? With anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to dip it, nothing like that. And right. If it's just a bullion coin. So here's here's one of the things I've learned. So at my local coin shop, if I sell them a tube of maple leaves and they all look good, they all look retail worthy, maybe they got a few little scratches or dings, they're going to pay me you know, a, a premium over spot, they're going to give me a, a good buyback price on them. Now, if mm -hmm. they're all milk spotted, they're going to uh, basically take them as if they were a silver round. So I'm not going to get as much premium when I right. sell them. So if I can take a few minutes and clean the milk spots off at home before I bring them down to the bullion dealer, they're mm -hmm. going to pay me more money for them. Uh, that You know, they don't, they don't care if they've been, you know, a little bit cleaned or handled or whatever. They just, they want them to look retail- uh, worthy, I guess. And so I've got no problem cleaning bullion, like, you know, dip yep. it, clean it, do whatever you want with it. Who cares? Right. But, but like numismatic items, never. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And, and the thing about bullion and cleaning bullion, you're stacking, do some regular routine maintenance, you know, so it isn't a big chore. Besides, you get to handle your silver and that's fun too. Oh, yeah. You got to love playing with the silver <laughs> every now and again. Um, hey, I'm going to ask you. OK, I know we've done a few of these types of questions, but I'm going to ask you one more about the gold. OK, so yeah. this has only happened to me once ever, but gold can get these weird like copper spots on them. They're not mm -hmm. actually copper. They just look a little weird. And and it's some people get concerned about it because pure gold you know, it's not supposed to really ever tarnish or age. That's mm -hmm. one of the great things about gold. But what's up with these little copper spots that people see on their gold coins? Yeah, those can be lubricants from the minting process. So, yeah, it's got nothing to do with the gold at all. It's just a little artifact that, that came through. Now, technically, that would be a uh, a manufacturing defect so if that's something that we saw and let's say these are perth mint gold bars that we're talking about uh we would uh return those to the perth mint and say you're going to want to melt that down do that again nobody's going to want to buy that also if we saw that on a coin same thing we wouldn't want uh you know no one's going to want that because it looks like a flaw even though it's it's just an artifact of the uh, you know of the manufacturing process, it it's going to cause problems with selling it down the line, and that's the last thing you want for your customer. That's the last thing I want for my customers is for them to be purchasing things that are going to be hard to get rid of in the future because yeah. they they just don't look right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, no, that's that's great information there. Um, so let me let me ask you this. Because you've been in the industry uh, for quite a long time, do you feel like um, it's changed a lot over the years? I mean, do you feel like demand is higher now than it has been, um, or you know, have have you seen uh, a lot more new people getting into precious metals? What have you experienced? Boy, there's there's a lot going on that's that's different. So when I got in, you were you were lucky if you'd see like fifteen cents of market movement in a month for silver. So it made it hard to stack and make enough money to pay for your premiums. And I think that soured a lot of people on it who were thinking this was going to be a quick hit or I'm going to flip it, you know, like houses or or a car or something like that, where I can recondition it and, and, and sell it quickly. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot more market vol volatility now than there was back then. Uh, you know, we, we seem to be taking and giving back the same dollar dollar 50 right now in in premiums you know we're almost 20 dollars and the next thing you know we're back down into the 18 dollars so that's that's new that's new um the there are certainly a lot more people who are buying now who are new compared to before it seemed like it was a kind of an interest people had or more of a curiosity 
it's a lot more fear driven these days. You know, you you hear certain things on the radio and uh, you start to become concerned about your dollars, your paper money that you're holding. And so, you know, you've been told to turn that into, you know, real currency, get it into the commodity market. So they're not dollar dollars anymore. They're silver dollars. They are gold dollars. They are, uh, you know, they're, they're into something that's real money, not fiat currency. I think that's driving a lot more new customers these days. And then um, a lot of those people are either older adults or grandparents. And they're doing this for their family because they're really concerned about, you know, what's going on with the economy and inflation and things of that nature. I don't recall so many older people getting into the game now or just starting. So, yeah, big changes over over 10 or so years. Well, where do you think it's going to going to go from here? Because, I mean, obviously, we've seen a lot of inflation over the last few years. We'll see what happens with that. But, you know, there's a lot of other geopolitical events going on. You got mm -hmm. um, Russia invading Ukraine, other potential events. Um, do you think that the more more and more people are going to flock towards precious metals? Or do you think uh, we kind of hit the peak at where we're at right now? I think we get more people waking up every day. And, and I think it is more, it's more fear, you know, and that's, that's unfortunate because, you know, I I really liked something that you said in one of your videos where you talk about uh, cost averaging and and buying it buying silver as you have money to do so. There's nothing sadder than seeing someone who hyperextends him or herself to purchase silver because they feel it's something they need to do, but then they they end up not being able to hold it. So in that situation that turns out to not be a good investment for them because they didn't let time do what time does. They, they let the fear kind of have them purchase more than they should have. And now they don't have other ways to take care of things that came up that need to be taken care of financially. So they end up selling before they're ready. And that's, that's tough. Um, so for for people who are looking at investing in silver, take the extra dollars. You know, I, I also hear from people who are like, you know, I cashed out my 401k, it's $80,000 and I want to buy all metal. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're welcome to do what they want to do. That wouldn't be my recommendation. But hey, I'm also not a financial advisor. I'm, I'm more of a, a facilitator of purchases, but that seems like that person is, is very, very afraid. And um, unless someone feels that's what they need to do for their family and that's, that's going to set them up to succeed and, and meet certain goals, okay. You know, it's not my job to talk people into things and it's not my job to talk people out of things. But if I know what you want to do, I'll help you do it. Well, uh, I guess kind of going down that line of thinking, let's say there's a, a new silver stacker and they just want, uh, you know, to uh, move some of their dollars into real money to protect, mm -hmm. help protect their family from inflation or what have you. And they they just basically want to stack silver. They don't care about collectibles or they don't really care about mm -hmm. bar bartering and they just want to stack. What would you recommend for one of these new stackers? What should they be purchasing? You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change. And a lot of that is going to depend on what we are able to get our hands on. So what we have in stock and what we have on sale. So I often talk with these folks about what I call the best ounce of silver in the store. And I've been kind of surprised to find that more often than not at Bullion Max, it's a coin. And it's a coin that's costing less than silver rounds or it's a coin that's costing less than silver bars without having to buy all kinds of ounces of, of or larger bars to get the lower premium. So uh, with the exception of those generic rounds that we just had that we blew out, uh, we recently had Silver Kruger and that we had uh, tiered discounts on starting at 519 over spot. It got down to about four bucks over spot if you were buying 500 quantity. 
Uh, we recently had kangaroos at 529 over spot and equanity. Um, the Royal Arms coin we have right now, I want to say at 579 over spot. That's got some potential collectability because, of course, it's the coat of arms of the royal family and the queen's on the back. And <laughs> as we know, this will be the last year for that coin. Yeah. Now, interesting, we're not taking that off of sale in light of recent events. When we put that on sale, we left it on sale. Because that's another thing that I, I've seen other bullion companies do that that have well, disappointed me, including my former employer. I couldn't stand the fact that if the market went down, they'd raise their premiums. Yeah. So people would call in because they're all excited that the market went down. This is back when it typically didn't. But it costs the same because the, the powers that be would raise the premiums back up. And it's the same price it was yesterday in spite of the market movement. I always thought that's kind of a shady practice. But um that is still it. I don't know if it's the best ounce in the store right now, but it's a really good one. Yeah, the, I, I was looking at those uh, yesterday or the day before, and 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 in fact, I I did put out a video recently talking about the Silver Dragons bundle, right? If people yes. wanted to get this uh, five ounces of silver that I handpicked for them, and actually, if people want to check it out, I'll put a link down below in the description. But in that video, I mentioned the coat of arms. Uh, and that I, I think it would be a great one to pick up for sure. So one, one thing that you mentioned in there, Sean, is that when the market goes down, like let's say silver goes down a dollar, Bullion Max, you guys aren't jacking up your prices a dollar? You're not just shooting up the premiums? No, there there are other dealers who do that. And again, I can understand doing that because you sold enough of them and now your, your supply is not going to meet the demand and that's a reason to move but as a you know before you've sold anything you're just arbitrarily changing the price because you know the phone's going to ring today um that that's kind of sad um yeah i i like your collection quite a bit um and I, I think there are some great coins that could be added to that uh to get people over the 199 dollars so they get free shipping which i i always recommend you know, there's no minimum order with Bullion Max, but why pay for shipping? You know, get get an order that's just enough to make that uh, that amount, and that's great. One thing I did want to clarify is, is that if people do like your collection, they can get multiples of the collection, but you only get the discount on the first one. Right. So you can buy more. You just you just don't get the extra money off. And we hear again, we hear from grandparents about that with the starter sets. Grandparents, if you're watching this, you got three grandkids, go ahead. You're just gonna save the money on the first one. But feel free to buy three of those sets if you if that's what you want to do. And of course, in doing so, you certainly would meet the $199 uh minimum to be able to take advantage of free shipping. Um other stuff that I know people are asking us because uh your Word is spreading far and wide on the World Wide Web. We do not ship internationally. That includes Puerto Rico. That includes Canada. So sorry. Uh, we are looking into how to do that. We know, as a forewarning for y'all, international shipping is ridiculously priced. So it may not make it worthwhile to be able to buy from us in the States. Plus, we'd have to figure out how to handle duties and taxes if those apply. So that's kind of the the challenge before us. But if we can figure it out, we'll do it. So, yeah, I know a, there's. It's kind of rare actually that a bullion dealer would ship internationally. So uh, from from the ones I've looked at, and you know, also me personally shipping internationally, it, it's such a headache. You know. Uh, yeah, we did it at at Atmax, and it, it truly took one very talented individual to manage all of that, because invariably something goes wrong. Yeah, it could be a quality issue. It could be a pick the wrong product in the warehouse. How do we fix an inventory issue? And then international call tag ow <laughs> you know so it's it's kind of like we're going to leave a man behind you know i understand it's an ounce of silver but it's 200 dollars in shipping 
to get it back. <laughs> it's just it, that's that's the trick is you you need to make sure you're absolutely perfect uh, in in everything you do before you start to think about shipping internationally because getting it wrong is gonna cost you. And yeah. it's not that anybody tries to, but especially the numismatic or semi numi stuff, where you know we'd get someone from a from a foreign country arguing with PCGS's rating of a sixty eight. Oh, it's not gosh. a sixty eight. Well, how do you know? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not PCGS, so I'm not qualified to say that. But anytime you have collector's items and things of that nature, and we're we're not really there for in the collector space yet or right now, which is kind of refreshing for me because people are never happy with what they get when there are seven of these left. And I mean, there'd be times when we'd have one one guy, one customer pretty much demand that we ship him every one of them one at a time, but they get progressively worse as we try to send them the best one because that's what he asked for. Boy, if there was any profit to be made in that situation, we ate it up in shipping. So <laughs> I'm not super eager to get into truly numismatic type of stuff. I, I really like the space we're in. Uh, we're growing with some more uh, interesting, if not collectible items, but not necessarily numismatic. Cool is in look at that. That looks cool as opposed to cool. Look at the historical, you know, uh, activity going on there. But um, it's really cool to be part of a, a new company. I, I never have uh, before. Uh, I worked at Atmax. I worked for Mattel for almost 20 years at, uh, at American Girl in the corporate offices there and uh, really develop my service chops and, and running award-winning service teams and things of that nature doing that. Um, but I'll tell you what, there's there are some similarities between American Girl and, and how I provide service through Bullion Max, and that is what people are doing with their purchases matter. So where previously I could say it's about keeping your girl younger for longer and all of that, it's still about you and your family. And I do take this stuff seriously. And you're going to find that I probably have better ears as a service provider than most other people that you've dealt with in a, in a service capacity. And that's usually where service starts and ends is how, how good is the person on the other end listening? And do they really understand what you need uh, them to do for you? So. Yeah, yeah. Before we uh, run out of time, the one thing that I really wanted to people to know was about Bullion Max and their customer service, and you know how great it is. Because some of these other Bullion dealers that I personally have dealt with, sometimes you'll get you know a few email snarky emails back, you know, uh, like oh, you know, you're you're fine, the product's fine, whatever. And it's like, are you not going to make it right, you know? And so at at Bullion Max you know, uh, can you talk about what you would do for the customer and how you could, you know, make sure they have a good experience? Sure. And I, I know people think this is a hassle right off the bat, but I like to get pictures if it's a quality concern. As, as I mentioned, I know most of what we're sending out is, is brand new. So there shouldn't be many issues, but sometimes there is something that sneaks through QC. You know, there might be a, a little ding in a in a buffalo round or something like that. I think we probably had more issues with that than anything else so far. Otherwise, consistency with coins is is pretty regular. Um, but if someone says, "Hey, you sent me the wrong number of these," well, we do everything under video recording, and I have no problem asking the vault to see if perhaps we made a mistake, because we are human. But this is where it would show up. So this is kind of why we package things the way we do. And we're either going to put things into a padded mailer that goes into a box, that goes into a box, or we'll go, we'll fill a box and that box will go into a box. If what you see us put in that padded mailer or in that box on video made it in there and your box was not compromised when you received it, we know exactly what you have or what you don't have, because if we miscounted, that's going to show up there. It uh, Also, if we had a mispick, 
well, our video is good enough to show us what exactly is is in the box. What did we pick? What did we ship? But I'm never going to say, you know, um, no, you're you're good. It's all new. I don't know. I would like to think that our QC is good enough where we've never had a problem, but we've had a couple of things. And in that situation, you know, we're happy to send a return label to pick it up, exchange it for something else. And unfortunately, once again, we're not doing true collector or numismatic stuff. So we've been able to come up with another coin or another round or whatever it is to replace it. Um, had two people who just out and out wanted to return it because they were disappointed and they were not confident that we had better product. Okay, that's their prerogative. But uh, we gave them the choice, gave them the opportunity to see if we could replace it or just refund them for it. But um, I'll always listen because, you know, it's just one of those things where historically, hey, I've made mistakes as a service provider. And, and when I have, it's when I was either moving too quick or maybe just did not give something the, the attention that it deserved. And I ended up regretting it, saying, man, I should have done better for that guy. There's one one thing I missed. I had one guy recently, quick story. I had one guy recently got 10, 10 James Bond coins. And he's like, but I ordered 20. Oh, no. Okay. So I researched it, and I found the order for 20. And I pulled the video. I sent him the photo. And he's like, yeah, but I've got 10. I'm like, wow, what the heck? Got to be something else going on. Yes, yes. Before he ordered 20, he ordered 10. Oh, it was a different order. He hadn't yet received the 20. Normally when I'm on my game, I would have thought of that right away. But that was that was like a head scratcher for a, a good two hours before I went, got it, got it. <laughs> two orders two orders yeah you don't you haven't received your 20 yet but hey you know i was totally engaged in the process to try to figure it out if we made a mistake we are going to make it right but you know that's all going to start with me you know i'm the one who kicks off the process i'm the point of contact and all of that and i i certainly appreciate how cooperative people have been uh, so far, forthcoming with pictures from all kinds of different angles and pictures of the box and, and all of that stuff that might help figure out why isn't this right? And if it isn't right, well, let's figure out what, what made it wrong. So uh, I love the cooperation we've had from people so far because others just, they don't want to be bothered with the process. Hey, look, I, I paid for this. I want it which of course I always understand, you know, I would want it too. Right. But, uh, um, it's been, uh, it, it's been fun. I don't, I don't get a, a whole lot of pushback for the few things I asked for to just try to try to fix those service type of things. Well, well, that's good. I mean, you know, when, when I think of buying from an online bullion dealer, you know, there's really three things that come to mind that are really important to me. Number mm -hmm. one is price. Uh, number two is the shipping and 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 quality and, and all that stuff, and then number three is the customer service. And it, it sounds like, you know, definitely from what I've seen at Bullion Max, you guys have the the whole trifecta. So, um, you know, that's really great. It's a great service you're providing for people. And you know, in in times like these, we want gold, we want silver. You know, and and mm -hmm. so it's great to have more bullion dealers out there and be able to. You know, pick which one you want for, uh, to buy from. Uh, but every experience I've had from Bullion Max so far has been absolutely stellar. So we really appreciate that, you know, as consumers. That's great. And we are trying to continue to get better. You know, the the core management team have, have all been in the business for many, many years. Uh, a bunch of us work together at Atmex. So it's like not only did I like working with that guy, I respected his work. And that was that was a big part of bringing me on board. Uh, I was the last of the of the management positions to be brought in, and um, when I found who who my 
my mates were going to be. I'd worked with them all before and and respect them dearly. And it, it felt like we were getting the band back together. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think this is why, as young as we are, we're we're doing things right as much as we can. I'm not going to say that we're we're perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I have a new respect for IT folks after you know being a part of getting our our website up and running. Uh, man, that, that is really a Herculean task. But when you finally get it up and you get it working properly, that's just um, it speaks volumes because that's how most people are going to interact with us. And we want that to be good, too. So um, we'll continue to try to figure out how to make it easy to shop as we as we add more products, because, of course, we want to grow and offer more things. But for right now, boy, we're we're easy to shop because without, you know, Greco Roman coins and uh, other weird collectibles like old currency, dollar bills, things of that nature, there aren't a whole lot of you know product SKUs that are out there to shop from, and and so we're we're easy to to shop for your basics. Yeah, the the stacking essentials, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely, the stacking essentials. I like that. Yeah, the, the important stuff. Well, well, awesome. Uh, hey, Sean, I really appreciate the time. It was great being able to talk to you uh, today, and uh, you know we'll definitely have to uh, get together some point in the future and and see where Bullion Max has gone from here because I'm sure you're just gonna go continue to grow and there'll be bigger and better things. So we look forward to all of that. But thank you so much for the time today. Absolutely. Thank you.